Welcome to your Tuesday lunch break. I'm Tanya Rivero. 2016 is the worst year for mumps outbreaks in a decade. As of last month, the CDC had recorded over 3,800 provisional mumps cases across 45 states and Washington, D.C. That is nearly quadruple the number in 2015. And college campuses are getting the brunt of it. Joining us now to discuss is Vanderbilt University Vaccine Research Program Associate Director Dr. Buddy Creech. Dr. Creech, thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely. Good morning. So, Dr. Creech, some of the campuses affected this year include SUNY New Paltz with 33 confirmed cases. They even had to cancel the swim team season. The University of Missouri reported 128 cases. Tufts had nine. What is it about college campuses that makes them especially vulnerable to outbreaks? Well, I think there are two things. The, the first is that students are in fairly close proximity to one another. Uh, they live together, they do events together, and so there's a lot of opportunity for spreading of this really contagious respiratory virus. But I think the second thing, and the one that's going to get our attention moving forward, is that we know the vaccine is highly effective, but we also know that its effectiveness wanes over time. So these college students represent both an exposure as well as a waning immunity to the vaccine. Well, I was going to ask you about that because I thought a double dose of measles, mumps, rubella vaccine was required of all incoming students. Is that not correct? You're absolutely correct. Most universities require two doses. Uh, and that gets us to about 90, 95 percent effectiveness of the vaccine. But the problem is, is that for every year that goes by, there's just a little bit of lost immunity. And we think that's probably because the mumps virus until this year when it circulates, it doesn't circulate widely. So there aren't those, I guess, natural opportunities for us to boost our immune systems. So by the time these children get to college, it's now been 10, 15 years since they've had their most recent dose. And then in the setting of the outbreaks that we're seeing, we're starting to recognize that those students may actually need a third dose of vaccine to carry them through this higher risk period. So is this third dose then under consideration by health officials? Could this become a requirement? It is, if not a requirement, maybe a recommendation, but probably just during the outbreak scenarios that we've described. Uh, every few months, the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices meets together. This is a group of vaccine experts that look at vaccine safety questions, look at vaccine effectiveness issues, and this undoubtedly will be part of the discussion in the February meeting, which is coming up. All right, so let's look at the disease a little more closely. What are the symptoms and how does it spread exactly? Well, to answer the second question first, it spreads through simple coughing, sneezing, sharing of secretions one with another. But the challenge is, is it's very effective at being transferred from one person to another. You start out with flu-like symptoms in most people, and that's when the majority of transmission occurs. And then in most people, the salivary glands on the sides of the face become swollen, and that's the classic picture of mumps that we're used to seeing. And then for about five days to a week, you're contagious with those swollen uh, salivary glands. That's a long time it's, to be contagious. It is, especially in a college situation where you're living in a dorm, you're participating in events on campus, you're going to classes that are fairly large, and it starts in those first few days where you don't know that you have mumps, you just feel like you have a flu-like illness. And how dangerous is this? In most people, it produces this type of illness, a flu-like illness followed by swollen salivary glands, and you just need rest and fluids and, and taking it easy for a few days. But rarely we see complications of the nervous system, like meningitis. And in men, in particular, we see swelling of the testicles, which produces a, a tremendous amount of pain, and in some people can actually induce sterility in those men. So that's why we take this disease so seriously, and that's why we have such an effective vaccine to prevent it. Absolutely. So, so what steps would you recommend college campuses take right now? And what advice would you give parents with college-aged children? And are there other groups that should be taking precautions? Well, I think the first thing is what we're seeing is reporting of the disease. These college campuses who are tracking disease and making the diagnoses in, in collaboration with state health departments and the CDC, that's paramount because we have to know how many of these cases are happening to know when we should intervene, potentially with a third dose of vaccine or canceling events that would be of, of high risk. The second issue is that I think what we will be doing going forward is recognizing that though it's a mild disease, there are populations in which we should be giving maybe extra coverage, college students, maybe healthcare providers. 
And then the third thing we have to recognize is sometimes these outbreaks begin with those who are either under immunized or not immunized at all. And so we need to spend the resources that it takes to boost up those who, who haven't yet been vaccina vaccinated at all with MMR. All right, Dr. Creech, thank you so much for all that great advice. Thank you.